Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And there we are. And silence. Very warm welcome to you. It is warm in here, a little bit cool outside, so autumn is definitely on the way. Meteorologically it is, but not in time yet. So uh, plenty of notices for you to read through. Please take your notice sheet home with you. I'll highlight two things. One is the Pentecostal Praise this Friday evening. Do come along and support it. It's going to be a different evening of praise and worship. There'll be plenty of singing, plenty of dancing. Whether you can sit or stand, that's entirely up to you, but do come along and enjoy the worship. And there's a retiring collection afterwards. And another thing which isn't in your notices, I've been asked if any of you have calligraphy skills in writing, or if you know of someone who calligraphy skills, Please can you speak to Dawn Treyer as we would like someone to be able to write every so often names in a book of remembrance. And you've, if you've often looked in the book, you'll see some very beautiful writing. So if you've got that kind of skill or if you know someone, please let Dawn know or Chris in the office or even myself or Denise and we would be grateful. So take your notices home, please read them, inwardly digest them and ask if you're not sure. So we'll have a few moments of silence before the service starts. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And please do be seated. And we're delighted to welcome Paul Francis, who is going to be our speaker today, and he's going to talk to us about some aspects of the work of CMS. So welcome, Paul. As we come together, one can't help but think every Sunday when we hear the gospel and we come to celebrate, we're transported a little bit back to the Holy Land where Jesus lived and worked and walked. And we can't really ignore the fact of the terrible things that are being played out there at the moment. And the Iona community has issued a prayer for the situation and I would like to share part of that with you this morning. So let us pray. God of mercy, we lay before you the hearts, minds and bodies of all those suffering from violence in the Palestinian territories and Israel. Shower upon the people of this holy land the spirit of justice and reconciliation. In you, Lord, all life is connected and all the earth and its land are to be cherished. Your gifts are for all, yet we see the violence and hatred in the land called holy. All humanity is connected. We pray for those who live in fear of the other, for all who consider violence to be the way forward. We pray for all who by acting in hate dehumanize themselves. And so we pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Amen. And so we turn to our order of service and we join together in the prayer of preparation. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past 
and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the Peruvian Gloria, and you will repeat after me, only you'll sing it better than me. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. And the collect for today which will be followed immediately by the gradual hymn, as we're not having the first and second reading today. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The fourth chapter, beginning at the 35th verse. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the, wave, then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Then they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding in the hills nearby, and the demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs! Allow us to go into them! He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about two thousand in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ.
What does it mean to go to the edges? It means trying to see the world as Jesus does and keeping the company Jesus keeps. It means knowing people at the edges belong at the center of God's story. Jesus never gives up, neither should we. Porque al final de cuenta, eh, Dios no, no te va a abandonar. Together, across the world and in the UK, we're empowering those on the edge of life to reach their God-given potential. God was here and I was trapped as a human being. We're equipping and encouraging those whose faith makes them outsiders. I asked God, like, if you are the truth, if Jesus is the truth, just let me know or, like, send a sign or send someone for me. And we're bringing hope among people who've given up on God and the church. Going to the edges means you'll be changed, too. Because the edges are where Jesus is bringing new life and where we want to be, together. Welcome to Church Mission Society. Welcome to the edges. Well, good morning. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. That's just a, a brief introduction to Church Mission Society, or CMS, as I'll refer. Uh, to them throughout the rest of the, the, the service. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here, uh, to Reverend Ian and the team, and uh, for folk that have already met in the, the pews. I've already got the, the history of, of, of the church here in the area from, from is it Brian, isn't it, from, from on the front row there? So I've already been blessed. So if nothing else happens and I walk out the door now, I feel like I've had a good morning. Mm. Uh, there's certainly worse venues in the world to have a church. And so um, I hope you again realize that you're so blessed to be in this location. It's absolutely, absolutely stunning. So my name's Paul Francis. I had the privilege, I've been in CMS for about a year now, just over a year. I head as, um, I'm the head of key relationships within the, the charity. And um, CMS is an organization formed over 200 years ago. Uh, and I stand on the shoulders of giants, people like William Wilberforce, who uh, sought to end the slave trade, and John Newton, who wrote the, the amazing lyrics for, for Amazing Grace. Um, and many of the churches and communities that exist around 40 countries in the world were birthed by the history and through the passion of people in mission of those connected to CMS over those years. And we still have that same real heart and passion for, for mission. Um, but today we work in a very, very specific context. But before I tell you what that context is, um, I'd love to ask you a question. How many people love doing jigsaw puzzles? Okay, there's a few hands going, I see that hand, every eye closed, every, yeah, I see that hand, amen. As a few jigsaw puzzles. Now, during COVID, you may know that jigsaw puzzles, the sales of jigsaw puzzles went through the roof, like over 400%. Um, but jigsaw puzzles back in the day were called dissected maps. This is a science bit. This is the L'Oreal now for the science bit, okay? Um, in 1767, a guy called John Spilsby created these things. And they started off as maps because he got the maps of the world and broke them up into small pieces and he put them within schools in the education sector so the children would learn about different places around the world. And then obviously the rest, the rest is history. Um, for those jigsaw puzzlers, there's quite a few of you. Feel free to, I don't know whether you, people are allowed to shout out from the pews, but you might be able to just sort of with. What's the best way to start a jigsaw puzzle? From the, out, from the outside, okay. I'm not a jigsaw puzzler, but we're talking about from the outside, from the edges, and that's exactly what kind of CMS do. We, we start at the edges, we go to the edges. Now, you've heard a little bit about what edges are from the, from the, um, the short video there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and unpack it a little bit more for you here. So, our world is very much like a jigsaw puzzle, like a dissected map. As we've heard and we've prayed for different parts around the world this, this morning, it's a very broken place, isn't it? And there's so much that needs to be done. But for CMS, we know what we're kind of called to. We know what the burden of God that he's put on our lives. And when I say burden, I mean a good, holy, righteous, healthy calling from God for who CMS are and what CMS should be. And he's called us to go to the edges. But what exactly are those? Well, I think to unpack those, we need to take our lead from Jesus Christ himself, who spent most of his time in the ministry actually with people at the edges. The downtrodden, the outcasts, the ostracized, the, the, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the sinners, the people that most people wouldn't want to go near or most people wouldn't want to touch. 
That's who Jesus went to. And he, we take our example from him about going not only to people who are at the edges of life, edges of society, those on the fringes, those are the, who are the outcasts, but in also different places around the world where it's maybe hard to follow Jesus or maybe where the gospel isn't accepted or lands very well or maybe where people feel that God has given up on them. And what we found, didn't we, in Jesus' life and ministry is that those people that felt they weren't in the edges, that felt that they were the center, the Pharisees, the religious establishment, were often disgusted at the fact that Jesus would go to the edges and to meet those people at the edges. But Jesus welcomes those people. He accepts them. He loves them. He offers them grace, healing, restoration, and he says, come and be part of my story. In our earlier passage in, in, in Mark uh, 4 and 5 that was read so passionately by Reverend Ian, thank you, Ian, uh, we saw how Jesus went out of his way to minister to those people on the edges of society. Early in that day, Jesus and disciples were having a great day. Now, I'm a disciple of Jesus, but I'm not one of the 12. But I imagine at that point, okay, you're amongst your own people, you're in Galilee, things are going well, the miracles are flowing, everyone's high-fiving one another. It just must, be, it just must have been an absolute blast for the disciples. Uh, and then Jesus says these words, let's go to the other side. And the disciples are looking at each other and going, oh, come on, man, these things are going so well. Let's, let's just keep riding the crest of this wave. Let's get, this is great. Why, why would you want to go the, the other side? Like, you mean over there, the other side of the lake? Okay, to Gentile territory, to enemy territory, to, to Syria? That's, that's, we don't want to go. Why do you want to go there? But the problem is the disciples, as you know, that made lots of assumptions about Jesus along the way. But as they got to know him a bit more, they realized that making assumptions about Jesus and about who he was to go to and what his calling was, was a, was a bad thing to do or was the wrong thing to do, was just foolish. They thought that Jesus' ministry was just purely to the Jews. But actually, Jesus says, I'm here for the whole world to reconcile all things broken and piece things back together again. So despite carrying this fear and uncertainty, the disciples do get into the boat. Jesus has a great way of persuading people. Uh, and as you know, a big storm rises up. So the disciples are thinking, oh dear, I'm dreading going over here. What's, what are we gonna meet? But somehow, God allows the kind of, uh, this storm to come up, which take their, take their attention, take their mind off the stress about getting to the other side and give them a whole new stress, which is, am I gonna actually get to the other side of the lake at all anyway? Um, and as we see, the disciples react to this situation because they don't know Jesus just yet. They don't know what it's like to have the peace of Jesus in the middle of a storm. And they question his love for them. It's like, Jesus, you've given up on us. Don't you care for us? And as we know, Jesus never gives up on us, on you and on me and on those that have yet to say yes to Jesus. They wake up in this fear and panic and accuse him. And then he calms the sea, calms the storm, calms the waves. And this calming of the storm foreshadows what's to come when they get to the other side of the lake. And when they get there, they're in Gentile territory. There's people among tombs living with the dead and there's pigs. And all these things were kind of countercultural to the Jewish. They were kind of like dirty or unclean. And they meet this demon-possessed man. All this stuff would have been unclean and uncomfortable for the Jewish religion. And it would have it would have been really difficult for the disciples to be there. They were totally out of their comfort zone. But when you go to the edges, whether that's a geography or whether that's the people that are on the edges of life, the downtrodden, the outcasts, the ostracized, the ones that no one wants to look at or touch, it does take us out of our comfort zone, doesn't it? And yet Jesus, motivated by his deep love, doesn't give up. He searches out this demon-possessed man and he heals him and restores him. Look at what Jesus can do. Look at what he chooses to do. He calms these storms, renews the man's tormented mind, and he takes someone who everyone else has forsaken, and he says, I'm calling you to be part of my story. Part of the, the work that CMS does, I was chatting a little bit with Brian earlier, is not only do we send missionaries from the UK out to 40 or so different countries around the world, a massive heart of ours over the years, and increasingly so is my, my understanding, is that we are raising up indigenous people, those who are on the ground, who know the community, know the culture, speak the language, and raising up these people. And I think maybe this demon-possessed man that's been healed and renewed and restored becomes maybe the first missionary within that territory and that region. What an incredible moment for that person. What a story, what a testimony to use. The Bible says that we overcome uh, the enemy by the blood of the lamb, and by the testimony of our heart. What a testimony. And as you know, a good testimony 
is powerful. It moves you, doesn't it? We'll hear one from a gentleman in a, in a moment on the, on the video. So this is the Jesus that CMS follows. We follow him to the edges, to the edges of church, the edges of society, the edges of our own comfort zones, the places in it where it's, and the spaces where it's difficult to follow Jesus, accept Jesus, or, you know, for people who might have assumed that Jesus actually wasn't for them. We believe God is already working there. Even when we don't go to a place, Jesus, because he loves the planet so much, is already working in these spaces. And we have the privilege in CMS to partner with him and join with him and be part of what he's doing, be part of his story. So one of the places, quite often people think CMS, we, you know, all our stuff's overseas, but a lot of our work actually was in GB. There was a, a, a big research study they've done in recent years where it said like 85% of people that currently don't, don't go to church would say they probably wouldn't go to church to find Jesus. That wouldn't be where they would go. And so there's a lot of people out there that don't know Jesus just yet who, based on the research, the high majority are saying they wouldn't come in a building like this to find out about Jesus. So what does that mean? That means we need to be thinking about outside the walls of the church. I know you guys do a lot of that. I'll maybe reference some of that in a wee minute. It's about reaching people where, where they're at, maybe going to the edges. It's a powerful part. So I want to tell you a bit about the story of a, a, a family, well, a community in Rotherham, in GB. I want to tell you about Steve, about Ashley, Claire, and about Ali. And we're going to watch this short video and hear their stories. I hope, you, I hope this moves you. I'd been almost for nearly four years. We were in a terrible state with uh, alcohol and drug problems, contemplating suicide. I prayed to God that someone had helped me. Uh, I was sat here, you know, very depressed and alone, and she come up and befriended me, and it's been like that ever since. We're all actually only a couple of steps away from poverty. You know, things can happen. My name's Ali Middleton, and I'm an associate vicar here at Rotherham Minster. Rotherham's a curious place. It was once very, very prosperous with the steel and the coal, but that glory is now faded and the shops are leaving. Now it's really high on all the indices of deprivation, particularly around health and mental health. Because of COVID, we started something called Social Supermarket. There was lots of uh, food parcels being delivered. And the overwhelming response was that people loved the food, but what they really enjoyed was the chat on the doorstep. And that was where it birthed, really. The way that we operate it is that people are referred to us for around three months. And during that time, they pay three pounds each visit. So they get to go over to our little shop that we've got now, and they get to choose what they have. Massive, massive help. They've given me clothes, food, anything I need, basically. I come here once a week and it helps me fill my cupboards up and feed my kids. I'm here today to get food and more clothes for Babby because she's outgrown all the clothes. They ask me if I'm all right and that and try and help me the best way they can. It helps a lot of people that come in, and not just that, when it's social supermarket, it's like a gathering and we get, we get talking, we have a cup of coffee, and it's another day out for me, you know what I'm saying? It keeps me busy. I was really, really nervous and really, really anxious at first when I came in. But then when I got to know people, everyone's just so welcoming. I was a member for three months and then I've just come to volunteer. We try and make it so that we're being with people rather than doing for people. Everybody's uh, got something to bring. And so the community's developed amazingly and they're part of what happens. And that, I think, is quite transformative for people. The social supermarkets help me with all my budgeting, all my meal plans for all my family. They've brought my confidence out. Food poverty is only one symptom of the situation. So we also have this holistic response. I've seen lives being transformed through it. I've seen people come to know God through it. People just asking really deep questions of faith and just that spiritual hunger is actually quite visible and visceral. So we decided to start um, a Thursday group, which is a chance for people to come with their questions and to talk about them. I started asking questions about God because I was curious and I knew nothing. But it's more than just sitting and talking about the Bible and Jesus and God. And you know, if somebody comes and they've got an issue, we can all sit together in a safe space and talk about it and help each other. And I've got good friends, you know what I mean, that are helping me to stay clean. Everybody that goes to this church has been very supportive of me. 
Jesus has made a big difference to my life. It, uh, every time I read the Bible, there's you know quotations there that make sense to me. And like I say, I know God is helping me. I do, I can feel his presence every day, you know what I'm saying? It's a struggle, but it's helping. And to, for me to be clean off all that, what I were on, is it's all to do with God. With your help, CMS can train more pioneers like me to help make disciples of Jesus with people on the edges. I know God is helping me, I do. I can feel his presence every day, says Steve. You know, I've watched this video countless times. It still gives me goosebumps um, to hear the stories of transformation, see the smile on Steve's face. Um, I know this story probably resonates with the community here uh, in Port Chester because, um, you know, I, I know you guys have a heart for people with, with mental health challenges, uh, with, with drink and drugs and addictions some of the work you've done around reaching out to people and creating safe space for people just to come and be, and be accepted. Um, so I know, that I know this, this story will resonate with you. Um, it particularly pulls at my heartstrings because I had first-hand experience of seeing the impact of drinking drugs with my own family. Uh, I lost a sister-in-law aged 26 uh, to a deathly concoction of drugs and alcohol, and a younger brother whose addictions from his mid-teens have seen him die to death on, on several occasions. Um, CMS partners are working all over the world in many of these hard to reach places um, to reach people like Steve and Claire, people loved by God who are struggling with life, who are struggling at the edges of life, who are struggling with hope and who have given up on Jesus and maybe don't think he's for, for them. But I love the fact that Jesus never gives up. And because ne Jesus never gives up, I think the call for us is that we shouldn't give up. It can be very easy, can't it, praying for a situation or a person for, for many, many years and not seeing the breakthrough that you want. I, I'm sure there are countless stories uh, here, right in this congregation right now, stuff you may be carrying right now, where it would be easy to give up. And I know the time and the waiting can be really hard. But I want to encourage you that Jesus never gives up. And, and neither should we. So we do live in this fractured, kind of broken world, broken in lots of ways, but just like the puzzle we heard about earlier, we have to believe that our world has uh, God-given potential for beauty. That the individuals, people that are coming to your mind as, as we've been talking this morning, um, that there's potential for God-given beauty in their lives. There, there is hope this morning for you and for the people that are dear in your heart. And this is where most of us can make the difference. We can make a difference by praying and by giving. And um, as you have seen, on, on, as you came in, there was a wee card here. And I know what, you, I know what some of you think, he's gonna ask me for money now. Uh, well, the answer is yes, and it's also no. Um, I used to work in the corporate world for about 10, 15 years, sales, marketing, cutthroat.com stuff. Um, and I loved it, and it was good, and it was a blessing to me in my, my life. Um, but if someone said to me, you're going to end up working in church-based work, youth work, charitable work, fundraising, and asking people for money, I would have gone, no, there's just no way I'm doing that. That, that just sounds awful. Um, and I got hoodwinked um, into working firstly for Tear Fund for about 10, 11 years. And six weeks into the job, I realized, oh, I'm a, I'm a fundraiser. I'm, I'm actually asking people to support what, what, what we're doing. So now, fast forward sort of 13, 14 years, you know, I feel an actual privilege to be able to ask people to partner with us in financial support. I don't feel awkward about it in the best sense. I know it can be a bit awkward hearing someone ask you for money or it can be a bit taboo, um, um, but I don't feel that way because I think it's more than asking you for some of your hard earned this morning. It's asking you to consider partnering with what God is doing and what CMS are doing in partnering with God to reach people like Steve on the edges all around the world. Now that's a whole different ask. That's a whole different invitation to partner with what God is doing and join us in partnership. I'm gonna explain how to sort of fill out the card in a wee second if you'd like to do that. But before I do that, let me just give you one quick um, story. How many people, you don't have to put a show of hands, but how many people here, even now, or at some point in your life, have received a regular payback, a monthly paycheck? Um, I know I do, um, and I'm very grateful for it. Imagine I was your boss, and I said to you, do you know what, um, see this money thing, 
salary better than your, your job. I, I, I try and get the money to you at some point. I'm not sure if it'd be this month. It might be next month. Do you know, I might build it all up and give it to you at the end of the year. I, I just don't know. Let's, but don't worry about it. We'll sort you out. Now, my guess is you'd feel quite a lot of anxiety about that whole thing um, because you'd be going, well, when am I going to get my money? Am I going to get my money? And I've got bills to pay. You know, gift gaff are asking me for my ten pound every month and so on. I need my money to pay my gift gaff. Um, a charity like CMS can feel that same level of anxiety. So hear what I'm saying. We rely very much on the prayers and support of people like yourselves. Um, and regular giving is the difference that makes all the giving. Because it allows us to plan with some level of certainty, to make commitments to our partner organisations and to mission partners and people in mission all around the world to maybe start and finish a three-year project. That gives an incredible amount of security. Literally, regular giving and regular support supercharges your support for someone like CMS. So I want to encourage you uh, to think about regularly supporting um, us. Now, the, the, the weak answer there, you had heard in the video that £3 a month, a lot of these people were living in poverty, yet they could afford £3 a week, sorry, to be part of the social supermarket. And so my suggestion is, is to maybe consider supporting CMS with a £12 a month monthly giving. Or more if you can afford it, or less if you can't. That is entirely your decision. But regular giving supercharges your giving and makes all the difference to CMS. Um, if you're able to do that, there's a small gift that I have, have for you in this kind of little uh, like a CD pack, well, there's not a CD in it. There's a kind of couple of different sheets of paper to explain a little bit more about what we're doing, some prayer points, and also a small uh, magnetic jigsaw piece, your own jigsaw puzzle this morning. It's only five or six pieces. It shouldn't take you too long. Um, and if, if you have a fridge without a door on the front of it, you know, as in like one of the wooden doors, you can stick it on your fridge uh, or anything else that has a magnetic um, part to it. So I just want to make sure that when you, when you do flat form, if you don't have your bank details with you, do not worry. Just make sure you tick that little box with your details and a phone number which says we'd love to phone you occasionally. That will allow someone from our support or care team to give you a call and you can decide at a later date about what you'd like to give and get the details over the phone. So don't worry if you don't have bank details with you today. Just make sure you tick that box. So if you're up for doing that, whether that's £12 or more or less, do fill that in. Make sure you give that to me before you leave this morning, and I'll give you one of these small gifts. So I think with that, that said, I really want to thank you again for um, giving me the chance to speak and share about the vision and the passion for what CMS is doing and what God is doing and how we're all partnering together to reach people at the edges. So I just want to say, may the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Uh, may he turn his face towards you all and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Ian. And thank you, Paul. And please do take the chance to talk to Paul after the service. Now let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed on page five. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we now sit or kneel as we come to our prayers of intercession. There is a response today when I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you will respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we think of missions and missionaries, let us pray for those we know who have left their homes and families to follow God's call to this work. We give thanks for the schools, hospitals and clinics they have founded 
and we ask God to prosper them. We also ask for his blessing on the Wycliffe Bible translators as they tirelessly work to put the scriptures into tribal languages that have no written system. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, bringing before God those places experiencing war or terrorism at the moment, especially offering up the situation in Israel and Gaza. Also in Ukraine, asking for a just and peaceful solution to these conflicts. We remember all refugees, particularly at this time, those fleeing from Nagorno-Karabakh. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for justice throughout the world, particularly in those countries where Christians and other minorities are opposed and persecuted and women are denied their basic rights. We give thanks for the steadfast witness of our brothers and sisters in Christ when they know it could lead to suffering or even martyrdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our let us bring our King and government before the Lord. May the Holy Spirit fill them with wisdom and strength. May he lead Rishi Sunak and his ministers as they wrestle with the issues they are faced with and prepare for a general election in the coming months. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we ask for God's blessing on all measures to counteract climate change and global warming. Let us pray for those living in areas of the world where rains have failed and famine is prevalent, where natural disasters have swept away homes, communities, and livelihoods asking for God's protection and his strengthening for all aid workers as they rescue people or start rebuilding communities. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the church, asking God to guide all church leaders we pray for the visit of Arch Archbishop Justin Welby to our diocese this weekend, for our Bishop Jonathan, Ian and all his team here in Porchester. We give thanks and praise for the ministries of this church and for the dedication of all those carrying them out. As we continue to think of mission let us ask the Lord to show each one of us where we can contribute to this essential work with our time or money, with our prayers or our outreach to neighbors, family or friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. And let us remember before God all those who are struggling at the moment with the cost of living crisis, with job loss or difficulty getting a job. Give thanks for the work of food banks. We bring before God those known to ourselves who are suffering mental or physical illness, waiting for or dealing with negative outcomes of test results. We give thanks for the Lord's healing power, 
manifested miraculously as well as through the medical professions. So let us take a few moments for our own prayers. And we bring all our prayers together by saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you are able, please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with
service continues on page six. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Yours Lord, is, is the greatness, greatness, the power, the, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. <clears throat> For, for everything, everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and, and of, of your, your own do we give you. you. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and, and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son, who embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this in remembrance of, of him. His, his blood, blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Oh, 
And the post-communion prayer for today. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in our lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, God we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And we have one set of bands of marriage to be called today. and I publish the bands of marriage between Thomas Patrick Harkin of this parish and Holly Patricia Emerson, also of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this is for the first time of asking. So let us pray for Thomas and Holly Heavenly Father, be with them as they approach their wedding day. Grant that they may know your union to be holy in your sight, and may their marriage be life-giving and lifelong. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn, I, the Lord of sea and sky.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and those whom you love and those for whom you pray, this day and for evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.